You're about to listen to Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games. It's a comedy video game podcast. We would like to stress that the hosts are not experts and are really just very crass commentators. Seriously, this is an explicit podcast that happens to talk about video games sometimes. So please enjoy this pretty okay podcast with Tyler and Dave. Hello, Internet. Hello. It lives. <laughs> well, I, I, hope it never, I hope it never dies. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> is a new trainsy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Davesy. <laughs> Davesy. Mrs. Dave Fire. <laughs> Oopsie Davesy. Oopsie Davesy. Oopsie Davesy. That's, a, that's got a shirt winner. written all over it. Does. it. <laughs> or it's written on a shirt. It's written on a shirt. <laughs> <It's written on laughs> <a shirt>. We're <laughs> not going to make one to sell, so if you want an Oopsie Davesy shirt, just fucking write no, it I'll, on a T-shirt. I'll, I'll make it. I'll do Sharpie on a white T-shirt. Yeah, we'll just hand $25 make them. $25 a piece. Official Tadpog merchandise. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hand artisanal, handcrafted. That's right. Sharpied T-shirts. I love it. That's a great idea. <laughs> we could each make them, you know... And, what and you just never you know buy? whose handwriting right. you're going to you get. you got to get all three, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. a gotcha. You don't know which one you're going to get, That's so you got to keep ordering until you get all three. Because you know how I am. <laughs> Pick out your Hanes. <laughs> yeah. Send us your T-shirts, and we'll write on them and send them back to you for $25. <laughs> See, that way we're not out right. the cost of the but T-shirt. Also, also include, include a return envelope with your... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Say Prepaid. Return envelope. The t-shirt says he. Also, if you could put a Sharpie in there, that'd be great, too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, if you want it in a certain color, just send that color Sharpie. Yeah. It's a convenience to you, you see. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> oh, man. Tad Pog Podcast, Tyler and Dave, and Ian play old games. This week, we are finishing our Simpsons Saga with the itchy and scratchy game. I really honestly cannot believe that like it took us this long of talking about Super Nintendo games to even get to a Simpsons game. True, yeah. Because yeah. I mean this Just is ten years. I mean yeah, almost eleven. It's fucking crazy. Just half the show's runtime. <laughs> I mean, it took Stephen King longer than that to come out with the fifth book of the Dark Tower series. So I mean, you know. They're the same kind of thing, it's, right? Yeah, our show We're is genius, in demand just like as his, Stephen right? King, yeah. aren't we? <laughs> yeah, totally. We definitely have a bigger fan base than they that often call us loser. the what the, the Kentucky Wolves of the Kala. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think that was book five. Was that? Yeah, I think you're right. Well, it's Kentucky, though. So it's coyotes, Co- <laughs> and it's pro- <laughs> and it's pronounced Kala. Coyotes of Cala. Coyotes of Cala. <laughs> well, before we uh, we dive into all the itchy and scratchy goodness. All the scratchy you can itch. Yeah. All <laughs> the itchy you can scratch. <laughs> <laughs> what you guys been up to? Boy, I've had a day. Yeah. It's just been a day for me. And I have Sorry. I have I have an announcement to make, but I've got to tell a story to get there. Okay. If you're cool with that. Totally. I was just going to say, I, I'm, I'm hoping that the announcement isn't, I'm leaving the show yeah. because we just did 20 minutes of scheduling. Prior. <laughs> you could have saved us a lot of time. <laughs> so I'm leaving the show. Ah, um, fuck. You're curious about that scheduling? Just you wait. In a, in a couple of hours, and I'll be back next week, just like normal. I'm not going anywhere. I like it here. Good. I yeah. thought you maybe you got, you're like, okay, we're done with The Simpsons. No. We've done the four Simpsons games. I'm That's done. That's really all I was in it for. I figured it might finally, be. Finally, I've been here two years, and y'all still ain't done the damn Simpsons yet. <laughs> uh, so, no, I had, a, I've had a, I had a really fucking shitty day at work, and it was my own fault, and... I did a, I was doing, I work in the information technology industry, Mm -hmm. for those of you listeners that don't know, and every bit of the fucking problems I had today was my fault making, I made 
two stupid mistakes that required me to um, involve several people that I work with, Captain Gun Nerd included, uh, to rectify my dumbassery. I got pulled in a direction... Like, I was working on this thing that I had planned on. I even came into the office. I normally work from home on Thursdays. I came into the office today to work on this project because I was basically moving a client's entire primary server to another machine, Mm. which is hard, especially if you're me and you don't remember things very well. I've done a lot of these. It'd probably be harder for me, to be perfectly honest. But I've been getting handheld for the most part when it comes to this kind of stuff. And this today was the first time I had ever just sort of dump, jumped in and did it on my own. And much to my chagrin, I, I made a, a classic blunder of... I'm not going to say what it was because it's a real technical thing, but basically while I was working on the server, I got distracted by... A, Another coworker who was asking me a question about something unrelated, and I'm not the kind of person that can just not answer a question. So I kind of was like, oh, well, I'm waiting on this thing to finish on this project. So I turned to the other guy and I answered his question, and I turned back. And the, the server at that moment was essentially telling me that what I was telling it to do was a terrible idea and don't do it. And I was like, okay, click. I clicked OK instead of cancel. Did you like immediately realize what happened? No, oh, I didn't. No. And I thought, because I thought what I was doing was fine. Oh, OK. But I wasn't, I didn't fully read the error message that came up. I see. I, I, I just assumed it was part of, because throughout this process, you tend to get little messages like this. Right, that, sure. That I have gotten accustomed to just saying, yep, I know, click OK and move on. And this time that was, that was a real important message, and it was really the whole system. In this particular case, the whole system, every network that you've ever been on in the last 20 years has been designed around me, around someone. This is the one thing you just don't do. Everyone knows it except me until now, uh, and I did it. The system and is down. I took... <laughs> This was, a, this was fortunately this was a smaller client. Fortunately, they were made aware that this process could go on all day. Mm-hmm. You know, I let my I, I I did what I called what John and I like to call I, I gave them a Scotty answer, and the Scotty answer is when you're an engineer or when you're in IT, you always tell either the client or your boss that something's going to take three times longer than it's actually going to take. So, A, if you fuck up and the project goes way long, you've already set that expectation. But B, if it goes the way it's supposed to, I come in three or four hours under the wire looking or, and looking like a fucking under superstar. Over exactly. <laughs> That's a creative industry thing, too. Exactly. Sure. So um, I had to get a lot of help with this. And we we got that problem fixed, but then there was a second component to this server migration, which was moving like mission critical software from the old server to the new server. All their financial data uh, and their accounting software had to be moved as well. And I ran into a lot of problems doing this because it's not just copy it over. You have to install the software, move it, blah 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 blah, do all this stuff to make it work right. <laughs> And I I didn't know what I was doing because this was not software that we normally support. In fact, the company that I was doing the work for pays that other company, the accounting software company, to support it. So I reached out to their support and I was like, yo, I went through the instructions. I'm having some problems. Can you help me? Yeah, smart. It ended up being like, the guy was on the phone with me. He was hanging out and then he's, he, and then I ran into a problem that was, keeping me from doing something because of what had happened earlier. The first problem Mm -hmm. came back to bite me in the ass for like the sixth time through this project. (laughs) And so I ended up, this is the worst part. I had to go, I had to, I had to tell the guy, the support guy, I got to call you back. That's a huge problem because 
I waited on hold for a really long time for this guy to pick up the phone, mm. and I couldn't keep him while I'm working on my fucking issues that I created. I had to let him go. And so I let him go. And of course, of course, I solved the problem five minutes sure. after I let that guy go. So I had to get back on the phone. And then when I got back on the phone with the guy who left me his email and all this stuff, I email, he calls me back. And I'm like, wow, the guy called me back. That's nice. Yeah. That was nice. That's a good system. And then he's in this mode of trying to tell me, well, just do this, this, and this. And if it doesn't work, call me back. I'm like, no, no, no. No, 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 no. Hang on. <laughs> Hang out with me. He's like, well, I'm, he's like, uh, unfortunately, um, this part of my shift, I'm working frontline. I got to take calls, but uh, you can email me or call and we'll be able to help you out. You're like Harvey Keitel in the backseat of the car and yes. more dogs. Uh, I, <laughs> you're going to be okay. <laughs> Say the goddamn words. <laughs> I'm not gonna be okay. I am, bleeding, I am Tim. I am Tim Roth. Tim Roth. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. You're and, Tim Roth. He's, he's Harvey, Harvey Keitel. Keitel. Yeah. Anyway, I. Uh, ooh, my watch said it's loud in here. Oh. So anyway, <laughs> I fucking I'm fucking dying, man. I can fucking die in here. Watch calling calling an ambulance. <laughs> You're gonna be okay. No, I'm not gonna be okay. I'm bleeding out. Stay with me. No, I'm sorry. I can't. I'm like, fine, don't. I don't care. I didn't like you anyway. So I fucking go through the thing, and I do the stuff, and I think it's, I guess it's all right. I don't know. I call the guy back. It's not the same guy. I get another guy who was less dismissive, but still sort of dismissive, you know, like, oh, yeah, that's no problem. Blah, 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 blah. Do this, do this, do this, and you'll be good. Okay? Uh-huh. Okay. He kept ta up talking like yeah. he was trying to... Are, right. okay. are, we, are we good? Right. Are we I'm, raiding, I'm raiding in Final Fantasy right. right now. Could you get off the phone? Social yeah. cues. <laughs> Social, Social cues. cues. <laughs> uh -huh. So anyway, I, I guess it's fine. I had to leave it in the state that it's in now. I had to email the client and be like, yo... So you know that financial software y'all are so fond of using? You can't use it still. And uh, I'll call you first thing in the morning uh, to test. And if it doesn't... I'm So I'm dreading going to work tomorrow because sure, I'm yeah, afraid it's going to be all the fucking shit all over again. Yeah. Because... So anyway, I'm really very fucking frustrated at them, at this software. Uh -huh. And the I've had problems with this software before, it's made to be supposedly it's easier, better than this or the. But I, I hate the fact that we have to deal with that software. Right. I hate it, and it is because of this that I have, and among other little reasons, that I have decided. Unfortunately, I might have to be the very first person to ever renounce their title. Their Tadpog bestowed title. I no longer wish to be referred to as Wiz and Sage because the software I was helping support today was Sage <laughs> accounting software. <laughs> that and it's like if I go on Overwatch, like everyone has the name Sage in their title. It's it's really? like literally three or four times every session someone with Sage in it. It's That's been wild. it's been used to death, but now I can't think of Sage without Thinking of this software that I hate. How about that old wizard? Just call me Ian. <laughs> oh, That'd be good. Okay. Or Wizen Host. I'll take that. Okay. I don't mind Wizened. It's because I am almost grizzled, if you will. Grizzled wizard. Grizzled wizard. That's Gris hard to Gris say. Grizzlard. Grizzled. Grizzle system. Grizzled. The Grizzlard. So I'm Grizzled Ian. Narf the Garflock. <laughs> so since uh. <laughs> Just to recap, I don't want to be called Sage anymore. So on top of that, after everything, have you this I I have um I had a moment I had a moment today where I actually said out loud oh, no. I picked the wrong week to quit smoking. <laughs> Did you quit smoking? I haven't smoked since Monday. Hey, yo, that's awesome. I'm that's sorry that awesome. this all happened today. No, me too. I picked I'm the wrong week to stop drinking. I picked the wrong picked the week wrong to stop sniffing glue. glue. <laughs> <laughs> I picked the wrong week to stop taking amphetamines. 
Uh, I was I was quoting Airplane when I said that because uh, and I might pull that as pull that for the transition this week, but it's I got ideas this week. I actually have ideas. It may I don't know, but yes, I have. I'm still vaping. I've still got my vape. My doctor recommended vape. He was like, I mean, vaping's not great, but mm-hmm. it's way 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 better for you than smoking. That's nickel. In your lungs. <laughs> yeah. You guys exactly. seen that commercial? Yeah. I've seen it a bunch. No. You, yeah, because you get the good you get the good YouTube. <laughs> when you get the poor YouTube, oh. <laughs> you get the, you get that commercial a bunch. So yeah, I as of now I, I hate talking about I hate I've I haven't qu- tried to quit smoking in a long time, but I don't like talking about it and bringing it up. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> because I know that if I fail, which is very possible, although I'm doing better than I have in the past. You know, I said I, when I hit 50, I was going to quit smoking. If I wasn't dead already, I would quit smoking. And it's, you know, I've been 50 now since August. And I thought, all right. So Sunday night, I just decided that's it. Was I there a like cigarette. a cigarette? Was there a thing that happened? Or like, was there a. No, I, I mean, I saw a COPD commercial, and it was kind of, it was like of this dude sitting in his easy chair, and he had an ashtray with cigarette butts all in it and stuff. And I was like, man, I should probably quit smoking. And then I just quit. So I had, I did. You can like, do what Melissa did to finally quit. What? Get pregnant. Who? Well, <laughs> I could. I could try. <laughs> Uh, I'm in. Let's do it, man. Guys. You walked right into that one, Ian. <laughs> Tyler's been dying to get you pregnant for years now. <laughs> All right, let's you, do this. But so I'm gonna blow through the, <laughs> this surgery I've had to stop it. We're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> breedable wizard. <laughs> I isn't, shouldn't have told you know. You, you, I figured if you'd been playing the long game, you just wouldn't have mentioned the vasectomy. <laughs> I'm trying to get pregnant. We're trying to get You're pregnant. You're going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Say the goddamn It's loud in here. I mean, she I did. Keep she, she cut back, cut back, switched to vaping, and then got slow, smaller and smaller amounts of nicotine in her vape. Yeah. Until she, when she got pregnant, she's like, all right, then I'm done. I'm not then, trying to like set my, and I could, by the time this airs, maybe I've started smoking again. I don't nah. know. But, but I, I've tried. I'm not going to worry about the nicotine. Mm-hmm. So much our as tens just of audience not, members can help hold you accountable. Yeah. Right. But just to, well, I don't like that. That's what I was saying, I know. though. I get it. If I bring it up, I know. it's got to be uncomfortable. Someone's going to like, be like, oh, I thought you quit. Yeah, yep. I thought I did too. <sighs> oh, I love it. Sweet. I am in flavor country. You were raised Catholic, right? You have to I have a shame based system in order to make it work. I wasn't raised Catholic. I was raised amongst Catholics. Amongst Catholics. In the, I had to go to Catholic church every day, but I wasn't <laughs> Catholic. So anyway, I decided I'm I decided Sunday night I just I had a smoke before I went to bed. And then I just been fighting through that urges it's not been that bad because of the vape i mean yeah. really the vape helps sure. a lot but i have had good luck this week and if i i feel like today was a good milestone for me in the sense of today is the day the shit that went down at work today was the kind of thing yeah dude that would make me yeah. i was I really truly thought about it today. I thought, "Fuck it, I'm gonna have a smoke," but I didn't. Yeah, that's a bit, that's huge. That is a big and that's that's the kind of thing that like drives me right out to the parking yeah, lot dude. to smoke. For so. me, it was I had that moment too. It was the first time I got drunk. After oh I quit right. Smoking. Well, see, and I got ahead of that already because I quit drinking. Right. Yeah. So, so I don't. Ha- I I won't have that 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 like thing over my head. But I but, went into that being like, I'm gonna get drunk tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this is gonna be a this is gonna be a deciding <laughs> deciding. Yeah, if moment. you can get through this, you can stay off them. Right. And I think today yeah. for me that was really it because you know yeah. I haven't gotten through gone through a weekend yet. But honestly, it's not been that bad because like Tanya and I have this thing. Tanya's still smoking, and that's I'm not gonna push that on her. I haven't, you know, like Monday she was like, "You want to come out?" As I was leaving, 
to go to work, I usually would stop and have a smoke with her before I left, uh-huh. and I didn't. And I was like, I was vaping, and she's like, she goes, are you quitting? And I said, no comment. I just didn't say yes. I didn't say nothing, uh-huh. just nothing. And now she is really good because she hasn't w- talked about it. She knows me really well. Uh, sure, yeah. Obviously, I hope. And she hasn't brought it up. She hasn't said anything. How are you doing? Have you smoked today? Nothing. Because she knows I just want to be left alone right. about it. So she'll, she'll get up and go to smoke. Not say anything. She won't say anything. She'll just get up and excuse herself, whatever, go out front. Whatever, and sometimes I'll go with her and bring my vape because uh-huh. I do still like the smell of it. So I don't mind being around other smokers because yeah. I'm like vaping and getting the smell, but I'm not actually smoking. Sure. So I, hey, I go out with you every time you smoke. Right. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I mean, I like the, I, I like the chat, but I mean, I do get home and I'm taking my clothes off. I'm like, oh, smell yeah. this, smell this shirt one more time before <laughs> it's I put it on. Drinking yeah. Lacroix. It's, it's, how, it's yeah, how you manage. Right. It's how you cope. So <laughs> yep. anyway. <laughs> there, there's that. So I don't. I have had a shitty day at work. I don't want to be called Wizen Sage anymore, and I'm trying to quit smoking. Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot. That is a lot. On top of that, I watched a movie called Pet Cemetery Bloodlines. Bloodlines. Was it good? I wanted to watch it, but I've been short on time. I Here saw the is trailer. the problem. The only problem I had with it was one that I didn't realize why I had a problem with it. Or why I was wrong for having the problem. They in in the original movie, there's also a remake of Pet Cemetery that came out recently right. where instead uh, of Gage get getting killed, it's, it's the, the little other girl. One. Yeah. We talked about it, I think. Right, yes. And I had forgotten about that one. Uh, and so I was still stuck on the one from the eighties uh-huh. with um Tasha Yar is in it, the woman that plays Tasha Yar in Star Trek. Denise Crosby. Anyway, Judd is played by Herman Munster. By right. uh, what's that guy's name? Go. Fred Gwynn. Fred Gwynn okay. is his name. I thought it was going to click for me when you said yeah. it. I was like, no, okay, I guess I was it's just. It's Fred Gwynn. Okay. But he I, played, I always he, think he's the dad from Gilmore Girls, too. I mean, they're that, similar, even aren't though they? that timing does yeah, not yeah, line up right. at all, uh-huh. they still gonna look like each other. Well, and it's speaking of timing not lining up, the this movie, the new movie, at some point in Pet Cemetery, Judd tells the story of someone getting buried in the Pet Cemetery. A, pe- a person, people getting buried there, uh-huh. and they come back and they're not quite right. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And and the, it was the story that he told about this guy whose son came back from the war, died in the war. They brought his body back. The guy's father buries him in the pet cemetery, and he comes back, and he's not quite right. Uh-huh. In other words, he started fucking killing people, but they just, you know, but this, okay, so this supposedly took place in World War II. The, move, the Bloodlines movie does? No. Well, no, oh, I. That's the, where the problem I had because the okay. original time he tells the story, he's talking about coming back from the wall, uh-huh. and it's Castlevania well, Bloodlines it, that takes place in World War II. It's, I was really, also thinking but, about Castlevania Bloodlines. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said something. It, well, it's clearly in in the first Pet Cemetery movie, he's talking about World War II. Okay, because uh, he was a so Bloodlines comes out. On Paramount Plus, stream now, if you want. And Fraser, Fraser's also there. But it, Not nice. it, this movie, this new movie, takes place during the Vietnam War. And so I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" Because they had Judd, the character of Judd, uh-huh. as an eighteen-year-old. And I'm like, this doesn't track. This is 1969. He was like almost seventy years old in the first movie. Uh-huh. There's only 20 years between there, which would have made him in his late 30s. But I had forgotten about the, the new, new one. movie. Right. Yeah, this one is mm-hmm. the prequel to the new movie, which if you think about the time in which it takes place, which is more modern, right? the, the, yeah. the age of Judd tracks and it makes sense. So essentially what they've kind of done is done away 
in this thing where we've got now multiple Pet Cemetery movies, they've kind of done away with the original movie in favor of building on the timeline of the most recent one. Other than that, and a few little, I mean, it was, it was, it was, I liked it fine. Uh huh. I think it was, um, I don't know if it was the the movie we've always wanted and no, didn't know we needed kind yeah. of thing, but I'd give it, when, you know, I give it three stars. I'm a little disappointed. Wizard Sage says, check it out. The who does? I don't know. <laughs> See, now that's going to be hard. I know, right? <laughs> Holy shit. I, for, I literally didn't know what you were asking me Grizzened for a minute. Grizzened Sage. Grizzened. No. Mage. Grizzened breedable Ian. Ian. So check it out. Maybe I'm just going to have to continue going by Wizened Sage because I don't know if I can get past it. Wizened Mage. Just change Wizened it a Host. Bit. Yes. Wizened Host says, check it out. Well, I'm a little disappointed to hear that. I, like I almost God, he goes who? <laughs> like, <laughs> like you're going back on what you said <laughs> five minutes ago, liar. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I need a cigarette. I'll be right back. I was. I wanted. I want an old story. You know what I mean? Like I want some shit from like the 1700s or something. Well, I'm sure know? they're gonna do that because they did talk about like in this movie they talk about. The, the town that, that Pet Cemetery takes place in is called Ludlow. And they go, they do like a quick, like a side, like a flashback to like the 1600s okay. when the town was founded. And that's why the that's what I want. It, it was a little, there was a little bit of that in there, mm -hmm. but I have a feeling they're going to probably, if this one gets some traction, I think they're going to probably do a. Do a pre pre prequel type of thing, but cool. it's pretty cool. I that's like the trailer for Pet Cemetery Bloodlines came on when we were watching something on YouTube, and Henry's really good at skipping ads. He's real fast, and I saw the timer and I was like, "Don't skip it." He's like, "What? Why?" Uh, <laughs> you never, you've we never don't watch me. commercials in this house. <laughs> you've never asked me to. I was like, "Wait, wait, I want to see this. I want to see this." Um. Man, they, I don't know. I just hope they do something with the. Because I felt like Charlie, the, the first movie, I felt like Charlie Brown trying to kick the football and Lucy pulled it up out of the way. Lucy being the kids wearing creepy masks in the woods. Because the trailer for the first movie, they really feature those creepy kids in the woods. And I'm like, fuck, this looks fucking good. Like, they're doing something really different with it. And then they did not do anything <laughs> different. Like, no. I mean, they did, but it was just so minor. They did a little bit more like world building as to why they were doing it. Uh, but yeah, right. they didn't do they didn't spend a great deal of time on that. But see for they the, got right to the right to the point. The movie poster, I put that in quotes. Uh <laughs> It's, has it's poster. We'll call it poster. <laughs> one of those kids with the mask on it. So like, fooled man can't get fooled again. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of masks happening okay. in this movie. Okay, what are they doing, man? They got this whole like cool like little kid rapture vibe unless going. I'm forgetting, <laughs> unless I'm forgetting, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back on it. That's I movie I want to see. Little kid, little rapture. kid rapture. <laughs> I don't That's, think. That was also on Netflix. I don't think that was I don't think I don't think there was a lot of mask action in there, but I can't remember. Man. There was I know what that was from though, and it really go it goes back into that flashback part I told yeah. you about. Okay. I figured that I figured that it might. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, all yeah, that yeah. like in the first movie, it's all old timey looking, you know. And, yeah, yeah. I I would say give it a give it a look. Yeah. If you're interested at all, it was oh, yeah. worth it was worth a watch. And I think they put some effort into it. It was three cool. stars for me cool. out of my four. Speaking of my my absolutely totally stolen rating system, Joe Bob Briggs was on AMC the other night, uh, hosting his regular show except on cable, and uh, he did Halloween. And he's in his like thirty yacht years of 
being uh, doing what he does, he's never had the rights to show it. Ah. So he got to show it this time. And I didn't know it was coming. Tiny told me about it like an hour before it happened. So I jumped in the Discord. I saw you post, yeah. Told, tried to get everyone interested in watching, but I figured, well, nobody has cable or shutter. So they're probably not going to be able to watch it because it was on both at the same time. But, That's cool uh, that they were doing it simultaneously. Yeah. But that's it. I don't have anything else. I've talked long enough, I think. Oh, uh, I did start Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, but I don't have anything to report on that one just yet. Dave, how about you? Uh, I've been watching a lot of anime. Not a whole lot of watching anything else. Spy Family's back on. Oh, my God. Did you watch I it? I did. It's such a great episode. It was such I, a good yeah, episode, yeah. Dave. I'm so glad you said that. It, I'd forgotten. It was great. It was like a perfect it. Oh, welcome back God, it to was. the series. Poor and, your. Yeah, I know. It, and the, the her 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 pain face uh-huh. is fucking great. Yeah. Like I need that on a t shirt. Yeah. No, it I I lo- it was it was a perfect episode. It, was. it really was a perfect episode. God, I I had forgotten how much I missed. Spy Family yeah. we, until and, I watched it, and then Anya in in top form. Uh-huh. I I watched this one in Japanese because I couldn't wait. Oh, I was right. not going to wait dub. for the dub. Yeah, it's good shit. I loved it. Yeah, we watched it. Uh, together uh, together as a family, Nikki, Henry, and I. We watched it when it came out. Um, it's real easy to convince Henry. I mean, he likes it, but it's really easy to convince him to essentially do anything if we do it after bedtime yeah <laughs> so it was one of those where it's like <laughs> hey man can we play Fortnite? he wanted to play Fortnite, so we played some Fortnite, and uh we got a win which is rare for us duos just me and him nice um so he wanted to like post it to discord and stuff he's got his own discord server and you know for, with family on there and stuff so we had a clip of the victory so he's like sharing that clip oh and, i love it uh-huh. Um, but after that, I was like, hey, man, uh, why don't you get ready for bed? And then uh, we can watch Spy Family if you want. And he's like, look, you know, looking at the time. And he's like, uh, yeah, OK. <laughs> 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 Sounds good. <laughs> he does, he, this idiot doesn't know what time it is. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the new opening sequence for Spy like Family it. is I'm, so good. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I, it, it fits perfectly. It's just. The, the tea thing. Yeah, I, I love, know, right? I love it. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. And the colors Ugh. in that, it looks like a very like, um, mod kind of spy. Yes, yeah. it does. It, that's absolutely what they're going yeah, for. Yeah, and, they, and it's great. I love, I love that love take um, a lot. I was um, so, I'm, I'm literally over here grinning because I would have forgotten to mention it if you hadn't brought it up. It's it's a, awesome. That's a fantastic show. It's so it's good. It's a fantastic show. So good. Um, and then I started a new series called 16 bit sensation. I've another that layer one on my list. Um, I'm liking it a lot. It's a story of, um, a f- young female developer, a who, video game, video developer. game developer. She is an illustrator for a Bishojo video game developer. And she, she loves Bishojo games. She, um, wants to become a famous illustrator uh, but she works for a company that um, doesn't really listen to her ideas. She has big ideas. She has big grand ideas, and they have a, a eeny teeny weeny budget. So it's like she can't can't do any of any of the things that she wants. <laughs> Limitless. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean it. To- <laughs> Worth it, but you did mean to. <laughs> I saw that. I saw Ian was imminent. I saw Dave time it. <laughs> All right, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Oh, I need a cigarette. You're right. Um, <laughs> but she, um, so she is distraught about that. She um, finds this like retro video game store, and she. Talks to the owner and like she discovers all these like old Bishojo games from like the nineties, and um, she she goes back to thank the owner and when she does, nobody's there, but like a bag and in the bag um, the store is empty. There's uh, all the games that she was talking about, and uh, she goes and she opens one of the games and she's bathed in light and is transported to 1993 
And uh, she goes to where she works. There's a development studio there. And essentially, she starts working for this Bishojo <coughs> studio in 1993. And um, I like it a lot. I think it's really cool because they like... What is Bishojo though? I'm not familiar with that. It's term. like a it's a pretty girl game. Okay. So it's a lot it's like, like idols and, and stuff, right? Or is it like when you say pretty girl game, what do you mean? Game for pretty girls? Game, or game featuring, featuring pretty, pretty, pretty girls. girls. Yeah. Say if it's for pretty girls, then I mean that, it can no be. one's gonna buy it probably. I mean I mean it, it can be. Yeah. But it features it features pretty girls. Okay. Um so a lot of times it's like like a visual novel or something like that. Okay. Um so well, I think it's really cool because like when she travels back in time, like this is like retro tech porn. I mean, cause it's like, you can tell like, like they really care about like that the things are accurate mm. and it's like, um, the developer's son is like giving her lessons on like, you know, you got to take the line work that's drawn by a pencil. And then like, she goes to scan it and it's like, what are you, are you idiot? You got to photocopy it first. It makes the lines thicker. <laughs> and it's like, what? <laughs> holy shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, she's got all this knowledge that they don't have. And it because, doesn't translate, right. which is the best, you know? Because she's like, oh, man, I'm going to be a, I'm gonna be fucking invincible here. And then they sit her down in front of, like, this 1993 computer. And she's like, what is this? It's so old. And they're like, this just came out. <laughs> that's what, that's how I would feel. I, that's why I love being Gen X because you could put me in front of a 1992 computer and I'll know how right, to run it. Right. And she's like, "Where's the pen tablet?" And they're like, "The what?" <laughs> oh wow. Okay. She's like, "I have to draw on a I have mouse." To draw and with like, a mouse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is this confusing? And there's like this like little dithering tutorial in it and it's like man this fucking this show fucking rocks because it like really gets into like old like il computer illustration and stuff and it's like because she's like what is what is dithering you did this with 16 colors and she's like actually 15 colors because one color is required by the system <laughs> 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 and it's like holy Damn. shit what is this anime <laughs> So I don't know. I like it. It's not like super like exciting or anything, yeah. and, it, and it's a little tropey with like the time travel stuff and like. Uh, but that's okay. I'm definitely. Nah, it stick sounds with like it. it's right up my alley. I'm, I, gonna, I'm gonna watch it. I, I think you might dig I it. I added it. I added it to my list whenever we were discussing it. Well, I wasn't discussing it. I was on the uh, anime discord, the channel on the Discord. Yeah. And uh, Kana was mentioning it. So, yeah, I immediately added it. I tend to add stuff that gets brought up in there pretty yeah, quick. Yeah, same, now. same. Um, and then I started reading uh, Dan Da Dan. Dan Da Dan Dan Dan. Which is, um, I started reading it. Okay, so I didn't know that the creator, uh, Yukinobu Tatsu, was the assistant on not only the Chainsaw Man Ooh. manga, but Hell's Paradise Ooh. manga. But I didn't know any of that going in. All I knew was I saw a page, a spread on a, on a Discord server that when I read it, I was like, this 100% was doctored and not from the original manga. Um, and then I looked into it, and it, it sure is. Um, so here's the spread. Ian, if you would read that for me, please. Starting here. Start on the start on the right. Yeah, there's a right. young there's a young man inside a dark tunnel. Yes. Uh, okay. And there's a troll uh -huh. looking woman that he's looking at. Yes, yeah, so she has bright white hair and stark, round, piercingly scary eyes. And she turns over and looks over her shoulder at this young man and says, I'll let you suckle my teats. <laughs> If you let me gobble your schlong. <laughs> mm, mm -hmm. Ghost! That was it. <laughs> and well, when weird. I found out that that was really from the manga, I was like, yeah, okay. I, I ordered it right, right then. Because I was like, I don't know anything about this manga, but I know that I have to own it. So that I can show it to people and be like, this exists. This is a thing that exists. 
She's uh, a cutie. Um, it's um, Some good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh. The art's really, really good, and it's the story of um, an unlikely friendship between um, like a tomboy girl and this um, paranormal UFO alien obsessed guy. Um, she believes in ghosts. He does not. He believes in aliens. She does not. And then this isn't a huge spoiler because within the first 12 pages, they both discover that they're both wrong and that they, they, they're both half wrong and that they both exist. Uh, the boy gets cursed by a ghost. Uh, she has the power to kind of like manipulate that and keep that at bay. Her, her mother or, or sorry, her grandmother was like a, a Shinto priest. Mm. So like she has some kind of sway over that. Um, it's entertaining. I'm not even done with the first volume yet, but I ordered the second volume because it's like when I finish this volume, I want to be ready. I don't want to wait two yeah. days for Amazon to get it to me. I want to roll right into it. Do you see this one going to um, a show, becoming a show, maybe? Yeah, I think it does. I mean, if I were to bet, I would bet that it that it does. Just seeing how like Chainsaw Man and Hell's Paradise did and... Yeah, I think I think it will will become an anime. Okay. So uh, I recommend it. My phone died. That sucked. I dropped it. Oh and, man! Uh, it was on a walk, and it was I was walking on some uh, rocky pavement. You know the kind of pavement where it's just kind of like it's less like a milkshake and more like a McFlurry. <laughs> where, yeah. mm -hmm. where it's like, oh, cool, there's just a rock sticking out of the ground, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And it was screened down, just right on it. And I was like, I picked it up, and I was like, okay, there's just a little damage on the screen. The screen's cracked. And you lit it up. Just a little damage. And then, yeah, the, the screen just goes, yo, dog, I'm orange now. All of me. <laughs> <laughs> All of me. And I'm like, ah, shit. <laughs> So uh, I went to the Verizon store, which closed in like 30 minutes. So I'm like, okay, going home. So like, I got to like walk back home as fast <laughs> as I can. And then get in the car and drive out. And I'm like telling Nikki, he's like, you got to come with me because they don't fucking let either of us do anything on the account unless we're both there. Mm -hmm. Like it's fucking court or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we like pile up in the car and drive out there and then like, the lady there was super nice. We're, we get there. I'm like, yo, I know you're about to close, but I've had an oopsie, and I don't want to go for very long without a phone. She's like, do you have insurance? And I said, I don't think so. And she said, ooh. Good. She's like, well, you owe quite a bit on that phone still. And I was like, I do? Because I thought it was about done. And I was like, uh, okay, well, that's not good. And she said, well, give me your number, and we'll, and we'll see what we can do. And I gave her my number, and she's like, good news. You do have insurance. Hey. And I was like, okay, good. That yeah. explains why the phone isn't paid off yet, because I've been paying so much in insurance. I think. <laughs> uh, uh, but, hey, it worked out. Um, you, turns out you needed it. Turns out I did need it. I had a replacement phone. I almost said new, but it's probably not new. I had a replacement phone, and like it happened on a Saturday. And I had a replacement phone on Monday. Yeah, they're usually pretty quick on those the Shurion turnarounds. Yeah, it was a Shurion. And um, boy, do I wish that I hadn't ignored, I don't know, two years worth of, yo, you are out of iCloud storage. Yo, yo, you are out of it. Because, yeah, I had to back up from like a super old, super old Damn. iCloud backup. Uh, that's okay. I pay, no, no, no. I pay Apple the ten bucks. Shit, man. What we need to do? We pay. We pay for it, but it's like, I swear to you, like ninety five percent of it is just taken up with like videos that Henry takes of like Clementine. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. It's like <laughs> yeah, I know that. That's why I don't get my grandson my phone. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> so meanwhile, I'm like, hey, sweetie, could you, uh, I don't know, text me the contacts in your phone? <laughs> uh, but I was actually, I was able to recover those contacts. So, Have you know, I made any good friends since... <laughs> 2016. <laughs> Hello, know. darkness, my old friend. <laughs> uh, so that all got worked out. Uh, and 
brighter news. I had the McDonald's sauces. The news they got new sauces, new y'all. Sauces. I broke diet to have these sauces. I made a made a I planned it out. I was like, all right, I'm gonna stay under calorie count, but my fucking macros are done for this day. <laughs> and I'm just gonna deal with it because I want to try these two sauces. They got a hot, sweet, and spicy jam, and they got a mambo sauce, which I didn't know what a mambo sauce was, but Tyler, you probably know because it's they claim that it's famous in the Washington, D.C. area. It's like a, boy, I'm the wrong person to describe it, but to me, it tasted like a, like a, a tomato, tomato-y spicy barbecue sauce is kind of what it tasted like to me. And I thought that I was going to like this hot, this sweet and spicy jam the best because, you know, just Berg's does a burger with, you know, some pepper uh, compo. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I love that. Um, but, like, that mambo sauce was like, holy shit, man. This is, like, this is good sauce. I hope this sticks around forever. Um, it probably won't, but it probably won't, and then they'll find some way to make Rick get mad about it in an episode, <laughs> and they'll bring it back, and people will buy it up in fucking jugs, and then no Throw one, trash cans and then no McDonald's one will give a shit in a week, and it all goes back in the cr- crapper. It's tough, man, because it's like I I do like the mambo sauce, but. I'm going to go with the hot mustard. I like that hot mustard. That hot know? mustard is the only sauce I like. Oh, man, it's good. It's real good. I love signature sauce, but that is gone. Yeah, I don't I don't know that I ever had signature oh, sauce. Oh, man, that was, was I that, love that. Wait, how, like, what era of McDonald's was signature sauce? Two years ago, maybe. Oh, okay. No, then I definitely didn't have it. Okay. I remember just got it by accident. I was like, oh, I'm out of ketchup. I'm just going to, oh, oh, okay. I'm going to ask if that's what they put on the... Uh, Arch Deluxe. <laughs> <laughs> it was similar to like that in Big Mac sauce. Was, I like that. It was, I like that Arch I Deluxe. I did love the Arch Deluxe. That Arch too. Deluxe. I was I'd sad get that in on college. That one yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, put that in the show notes. Arch Deluxe. Got my first kill in Dark and Darker, which seems like really super low scale, like in a game that's based around PvP. But man, I was so happy. <laughs> And I totally ganked him, and it felt so great. I just stalked this dude, UO style, until he started. <laughs> he was like, he, and he was geared too. And it's gear mattered so fucking much in, in Dark and Darker. And uh, he took on two goblins, and I was like, mm, he, he, this guy can probably take on two goblins, but can he take on two goblins? And me, stab, stab, stab. <laughs> and he's like, you know, kind of like turning around, like, what the uh-huh. fuck's going on? And then he. Prior, prioritizes me, which is smart, and I'm like, I'm running away. <laughs> so he starts coming at me, I run away, the goblins are still stabbing him, so he turns back around to the goblins, and I'm like, stab, stab, stab! <laughs> and then he dies, and I'm like, yes! And then I see a, another guy pop out, and I'm like, I'm dead. <laughs> like, for sure, because it's like, he hit me like once, and it's like, I have 10 hit points left, so I'm just like, all right, you got me. <laughs> I know this isn't your teammate. But. I yield. <laughs> Here's my throat. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So that was that was fun. That got like yeah. the adrenaline going. <laughs> yeah. it's like, and it totally felt like you uh, where it's just like oh, I know. hiding I, in the I, lich room. I know you. <laughs> I know you. I know how the joy uh, that you take from this exact thing. It felt you know what it this felt like. This is my first <laughs> introduction really to you as a person, like yeah. who you are. The kind of things that you like, and it's like it's that. it was watching when a person you, tells you who they are the first time. Believe them. It was watching watching you gank people in the lich room in UO, and just thinking, man, this guy, <laughs> <laughs> he's he's that guy. Totally. Never, never, never did it make me like you any less. I just I just got a real read on you yeah. from that from that experience from yeah. this and knowing that about you. So this this story you told is like it takes me back. <laughs> oh. Like, yeah, I know what he used to do. I, I know love what he's it. Up to. And and especially in dark and dark, because like in UO I felt like it's okay. I mean, like, I was pretty good at UO. Like I got a route. I had my hands around that. I, I yeah. knew how to play that game. I do not know how to play dark and dark. This is just like what it felt like is that scene in Fight Club. 
where Brad Pitt starts like he holds down. I can't remember the business guy or whatever. He's like, you don't know where I've been. It just starts like <laughs> leaning on him. That's what it felt the like. That it's like the you don't know how to play this game. It's like, don't stab, stab, <laughs> run away, hide, stab. <laughs> And this guy is probably like, fuck this guy. <laughs> yeah, probably. But it's okay. Because they really kicked the shit out of Brad Pitt. Right. <laughs> but but he just keeps coming back and spitting blood on him. And they're like, fine, use the basement. Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. You don't know Thank where you. I've been, Lou. Yeah, yeah. Lou. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's what it reminded me of. <laughs> and it's so, like, I've died probably a hundred times in that game, and I've killed, like, one person, yeah. you know what I mean? But it's like, that was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't played it since. <laughs> still riding that <laughs> yeah, it's going, yeah. I can't chase that's that right. dragon. That dragon is still right here with me. I don't have to chase it yet. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Been playing Itchy and Scratchy. <laughs> yeah. Did that. Same. Fulfilled that obligation. Tyler, what'd you do? Oh, uh, man. So tomorrow is Friday the 13th. Yes, it is. This whole whole week has been a weird shit show of, like, nobody at work could get along. It's just been oh, fucking fine. weird. Just been, yeah. Um, I'm so behind on all my books because it's just been fucking HR week. All goddamn week. That's all I've done. Like, Glorified babysitter and talking to HR and just sorting stupid shit out. What had happened was <laughs> <laughs> for multiple times in meetings, I'm like, just be n- come to work, be nice, work, and go home. It's all you people gotta wow. do. Come on, <laughs> just do that. Wow, these are not. Children working for you, Chris. No, These are but so I, semi-functional adults, right? Because I was telling my boss, it was like, I have been time warped back to 1996, and I'm in middle school again. Wow. And I am fucking tired of it. <laughs> Kids are wearing their fucking Big Johnson shirts inside out. <laughs> <laughs> their Marilyn Manson shirts, and yeah. It's white kids wearing FUBU. Because my executive chef is just like, I don't know what the fuck is going on here, man. Because <laughs> it's just, it has just been all week long. And mm. then, I mean, other other bad things have happened. Like so people have had like deaths, and it's just been a weird, weird week. Uh, so I've just work, taught class, went well. But my new mobile game that Melissa's turned me on to because she loves it is Monopoly Go. Dude, I've been seeing ads for that everywhere, like TikTok and stuff. It's been advertising Monopoly Go to me like crazy. Mm -hmm. So what's that about? I I like it. Uh, Unless you spend money, you can't really play it more than twice a day because you run out of your dice to go around the board, and there are different goals and different ways to get more dice. And so sometimes you'll have like a big streak where you'll have like, 5,000 dice and you can play for like an hour and it's just like man fuck a dopamine button in your brain and then it's over and then for like three days it's just like and then you're like you have like, like 80 <laughs> dice and that's like that's it and you're like, some money. I mean, it's just you know. two dollars it's just two dollars oh and they push that shit hard like I have to go through at least X out of four deal pop ups every time I open the game <laughs> so like they, they're pushing it hard um but so far, like, you collect stickers for more dice and points, and you smash other people's stuff and raid their their vaults and their banks for money and upgrade your town and get more hotels and shit. It's, I mean, it's pretty fun. Um, so that and Pokemon Go, while I'm taking a shit at work, has pretty much been, <laughs> been what I've done. Got some good Pokemon around the toilet at work? I mean, I'm close to... One toilet has a Pokestop. So that's the one I go to. Damn, that is nice. <laughs> yeah. That is that nice is to have nice. a Pokestop in a toilet where you work. My office is frustrating because it is right between two poke, like right between. I cannot get to you either can't reach either room from your. But yeah. if I go to the bathroom, I can get one. <laughs> <laughs> so in Monopoly Go, it has a similar name to Pokemon Go. Like, mm. is there like a augmented reality like aspect you're, to you're monopoly on go a, it's a th- three dimensional monopoly board and you of course get money and once you upgrade stuff so far you upgrade to a next world the different themes and you have other people that you sort of play with um you charge them rent because they're on your board your friends so the thing is like 
I didn't connect it to my Facebook, but I think anybody in your phone will automatically sort of become your friends. Okay. And those are the people that you can raid back and forth. So they'll basically, if you hit a railroad, you either get to smash what somebody's build, building or raid their bank. Uh, it's just random, whichever one. Uh, you can get shields and stuff that'll block them from smashing your stuff because if they smash stuff, you break it, and you have to pay to fix it before you can upgrade it. So my mistake has been where it automatically I don't I never delete anybody out of my phone because I want to know who it is. Sure. Ever yeah, to totally. Them. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm the same. So, That's why I was crushed when I couldn't get those contacts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so people that I have fired oh, that I'm no. sure do not like me are now my friends in Monopoly Go and will go out of their way <laughs> to try and wreck stab, stab, my stab, stab. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so I noticed there's one girl that I fired who just like every time I come up, it's like, yep, she attacked me eight times. She wasted what could have been a lot of shit to attack me through my Homie, shield. That was so not she could hit me. Her. <laughs> no. And it's like every time. And I can't block her or unfriend her. She's just there. <laughs> On on her podcast, <laughs> she's like, "Oh, I had such a good time <laughs> fucking with this guy." But, well, I also get to troll the shit out of my employees. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> who uh, whenever one, he's like, he's, he's in his early twenties. He walked by. He's like, "So you really like my money, don't you?" It's like, yeah. <laughs> I also employ his girlfriend, and we had a meeting with them today, and she was like. Will you stop attacking them? <laughs> when I go to bed, when we go to bed at Tyler. night, I hear your name more than I hear mine. <laughs> because he's like, he hit me 17 <laughs> times. Like, I'll decimate his shit. They're like four employees who, they just never had their shields up, so I just go one after the other. I'm starting to see why there's trouble at work this week. <laughs> Listen well, here. If, if, you're, you if you're smart and don't build anything until you can build it all at once and move on to the next world and start again, no one can raid your shit. So I've started doing that now. That's a turtle strategy. Yeah. What happens when everyone starts doing that? Game over. Uh, you have to hit randos. Gotcha. Yep. Who don't know any better. Yep. So most important question. I've enjoyed all this, this talk about it. It sounds very interesting. I, I have a coworker who plays... Um, and she definitely hasn't given me this much information on it. Um, can you play as the little Scotty dog? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, that's yep. Huge. I think bonus. you have to unlock it. Ah. But like the more you play, <laughs> and like right now I'm playing as a robot. I started as the hat, then I went to the Scotty dog, and then I was something else, and now I'm the robot. See, they need to start working in all the pieces from all the knock, or all of the like spinoff Monopoly games, like. Friends, Monopoly oh, there are a shit ton. So there, there might be. I'm just not Barbie there yet. Monopoly. <laughs> and we went to that game place in the mall. There's a game store in the mall, and they have like several hundred versions oh of my Monopoly. God, yeah, there's so much. It's ridiculous. But you can you can trade your stickers to complete your collections and stuff like that. And that's how you get huge amounts of dice and rare items and money and stuff. So every night, Melissa and I will compare what stickers we've gotten and trade what we need. So that's do fun. you get to like roll again if you get doubles? You get more money if you get doubles. Oh, okay. If you land on, if you go to jail and get doubles, you get bonus die. So, but Melissa, she got in the habit of texting me like, trade stickers, stickers, stickers. And I was like, my nickname for anal now is stickers. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, anytime you ask me. So, she made, we made that joke and then she forgot about it. So then she texted like, because every collect, they're like, 15 or tw no, they're 21 collections of like, they're like nine stickers each, but you cannot trade the final gold sticker. You have to get that on, on your own. And she texts me. She was like, I heard you can trade gold stickers now. Do you want to do gold stickers? <laughs> and I was like, oh. Hell yes. You mean like <laughs> pee in your butt anal gold stickers? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, girl, I'm going to pee in that butt. She forgot I made that joke, so she thought it was a real thing she'd accidentally said. <laughs> She's like, oh, is that a thing? Like, So she asked her well, her friend, who is kind of a know-it-all, <laughs> she shows the text for her. I'm saying, like, gold stickers, yeah, I'm going to pee in that butt. She's like, that's what they call it, gold stickers? The you butt. started was like, something. Yeah, 
Yeah, so that's what they call it. She's like, oh, I didn't even know. Oh, man, I hope they all started sending that to other people. Yo, you want to pee in that butt? Get them gold stickers, girl. gold stickers, pee in that butt. Urban Dictionary. When she got home, she's like, oh, I didn't know. I forgot we made the joke. (laughs) Oh, well. How would that even work? I was like, well, I looked it up. They pee. People on Reddit say it's fun, but it is like a super enema the second you pull out. Man, I'm that's got to be right. It's, it's hard. It's difficult to pee when you're hard. Like, what do you get? Like, yep. all right, so I go in, I get hard, I go in, <laughs> and then relax. Right. And then I think, <laughs> I think about my uncle for three minutes. <laughs> and then I pee in your butt. Hold on, I got to switch tracks. <laughs> right. Try- it's a it's a different nozzle type that I'm trying to <laughs> fluid I'm moving here. <laughs> Pee in that butt. <laughs> well, um, you guys, well, we can move right into the game. Let's it's do been the about game. An hour. About an hour and a half. Okay, that's what I've got. All right, take a break, then move on to game talk. I hear that's how women get pregnant. <laughs> Peeing, Peeing in, in the, the butt. butt. Peeing in that butt. Yeah, I heard that too when I was in first grade. Yeah. No, it was, we, of course, it was like first or second grade, and we had all just sort of found out how it all works, uh-huh. you know. And some dude had me convinced that, like, if if you if you pee, if you if one even one drop of pee gets into a girl, <laughs> she'll have like. She'll have like a hundred babies. <laughs> that guy had a bunch of brothers and sisters. I bet. must have. I was heard. I didn't know, and I was like, "Oh no!" Because <laughs> at that point, what we if didn't I pee know in a hot tub like, with a girl? <laughs> uh, at, that, at that point, we didn't know about all of it, like ejaculation uh-huh. and stuff. You know, we thought it was just you put it in, right? You have babies. Yeah, you know. And, uh, <laughs> That's what the public school wanted to think. He too. said, "If even one drop of pee gets in there." <laughs> <laughs> she'll have like she'll have like a hundred babies. Well, that's when I thought pee and sperm were the same thing. And whenever my mom was doing her makeup that day, and I went, in, "Oh, I get rid of all this sperm and, <laughs> and pee in the toilet." And she was like, "No, you're not." <laughs> we were I was dumb. Like six. <laughs> yeah, I, I especially boys. Literally remember hearing on the bus in first grade, hearing a conversation between two kids on the bus that the way it worked was. The dad would pee in the bed, and then the mom would roll in it. Oh, my God. <laughs> and that's where babies came from. Wait, that's not right? I mean, it might lead to it. <laughs> well, shit. I mean, I've got two kids, and that's, <laughs> I thought that's how we did it. And I've done that way more times than that. <laughs> <laughs> Lemonade? Please, I made it just for you. You are my best friend. Mmm, this really hits the spot. Mm, doesn't it though? You make really good lemonade, Scratchy. Oh, thank you, Itchy. Wasn't that funny, boys and girls? Well, wasn't it? And now it's time for the Game Talk. Welcome back. The itchy and scratchy game. The... I'm not going to do it. (laughs) Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. They fight. And fight? (laughs) And fight and bite and And bite? Fight, fight, fight. Bite, bite, bite. One might say so. (laughs) (laughs) That's why we're here, to figure that out. I feel like there was more fight than bite. So this is is very different than the other Simpsons games. It is. It's not a mini-game compilation, which is half of the Super Nintendo Simpsons games. (laughs) It's also not a puzzle platform. Platformer, nope. Crusty Super Funhouse style. This is pretty the best, straightforward. The best I could come up with of this one was it is an arcade. This is an arcade game. It feels like an arcade game. Yeah, it's yeah. just very arcadey. <sighs> I uh, I got about it. I know we're not on good things yet, but I think one of the best things about this game is that I 
don't really think I've seen a concept like this before. I this have not. Yeah, is a fighting game meets a platformer. Yeah, you play as Itchy, the mouse, and your goal is. I didn't know what the fuck to do at first. I had yeah, no fucking Because I just clue. went from left oh, to right. It's like, God. this is the platformer. I go from left to right, and then like... Scratchy pops in. I'm in yeah. a room with a Triceratops. I guess I have to kill it. <laughs> nope. The boss, right. baby. Nope. Yeah. And then it's you like... You don't. And it's like, where's the uh, where's the end of this level? Like, I had no idea where the end of the level was. Yep. Same. And then I finally noticed. Uh-huh. Finally Scratchy's noticed that Scratchy health. has a health uh-huh. bar. And it's like, oh... Am I supposed to like? Yes, you kill are. Kill him? I was like, oh, well, that totally makes sense. For like, in hindsight, an itchy and scratchy game, you're itchy, you probably should kill Scratchy. Uh, but I was trying to avoid him and I like, had, just get yeah. to the end. I, I had, had the to look exact up. Exact same experience. <laughs> exact same. I was like, oh, wait. Oh, fuck. Of course. I've got to fight Scratchy. Well, I was like, how the fuck do I kill this Triceratops? So then nope, I'll pull no. out a gameplay video. <laughs> like, I don't, I've, I've tried everything, I've died everything. What do I have to do? And then I saw the guy never even get close to it. <laughs> and suddenly it was over. I was like, what the fuck did he do? I had to pull up game facts and then re- read, oh, that's the point. Yeah, you got to kill. Had, we gotta had kill all three of us. Had, mm-hmm. It was as if we were in there sharing a body. Yes. <laughs> in this one, because I had, it was exact. I did. I, fu- I died to that stupid thing, that Triceratops, mm-hmm. six times. I'm like, there is no. Fucking way! Did you think it was the boss? This. I thought it was the boss. Yeah, yeah. that makes yeah. sense. It that does make sense. It's, it was, you have yeah. to hit a button to climb to the top, and it says danger. Looks yeah. like it'd be a boss. Yeah. Nope. Um, <laughs> if anybody wants to like, it's just a warning. Watch me figure it out. <laughs> I have uploaded uh, some gameplay footage of this game, and you'll be like, "Why did it take Dave like twenty eight minutes to get to the first? level which yeah. is a prehistoric level that's why and you'll you'll see the moment you'll be like ah that's what he figured out he's got to kill scratchy because <laughs> then the next levels after that are just kind of like boom 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 boom, boom. yeah <laughs> yep. Th- then it totally changes right <laughs> which actually kind of gave me a good i once i figured that out you know i didn't mind it so much Same. So i played through a few levels of this one yeah. and it, but and that's why i like it was a it was a it was an approachable arcade style game that had the same objective in each level but it was still fun it there, was there was one enjoyable i wouldn't say fun but yeah. it was enjoyable there was one singular thing that made me all right no nope i'm out but i'll save it okay the box art uh, I, uh, before we get into that, okay. I want to mention um, a little bit about the development. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you knew this, but our good buddies Bits Studio is back. That's oh, who developed shit, this, this Bits. Game. <laughs> um, it was published by Acclaim Entertainment, as all the Super Nintendo Simpsons games have been. Um, this also had a itchy and scratchy. Itchy, the Itchy and Scratchy game also had a Game Gear release, mm-hmm. um, and it was supposed to come out on the Sega Genesis. Uh, it was developed, and then never came out. Supposedly, that version was <clears throat> extra gory and had like blood yes, and, and yeah. stuff. <laughs> what yeah. we want from an Itchy and Scratchy game. What we got, honestly, still surprised it's me. It's pretty, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, it, like, at one point, you get, look, he slices you in... <laughs> Half right, and you see like sword. bones and like the yeah, insides, yeah. and it's like, whoa, okay. All I right. mean, that's great, but mm. it's it's weird. Nintendo has conditioned me so much yeah. to like yeah. watch my pearls when I see that yeah. on a Super Nintendo <laughs> game, you know? Like, um, yeah, I there's a ROM dump out there. I've heard. Um, I didn't. I wish I would have tracked mm. it down, but I didn't have <laughs> really. I didn't have the time to like go and dig up the. Rom, and then also kind of be like, is this real, or did someone like you know, or is it the episode where Scratchy finally gets itchy and we'll never show it again? <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was one of the trivia things for this game that I found was like, this is one of only two or three pieces of published media where Scratchy kills Itchy because you can die oh, to, yeah. to Scratchy in this game as Itchy. Yep. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm super <laughs> not up on my itchy, scratchy lore. How dare you? I know. 
I call myself a call podcaster. A podcaster. <laughs> I have the goal to show up in the studio. We have an understanding I know. here at Tadpog that it's you true. will be up to speed on your itchy and scratchy lore. I brought great shame to the podcast today. Because <laughs> um, look at the box art. I just would have figured, hey, it looks like the art for the actual mini show inside The Simpsons. Yeah. It's probably a platformer. Yeah, I would have yeah. assumed it was a platformer. Yeah. Scratchy's got dynamite in his ears and like a dynamite bow tie. And that's about what they give mm. you to go on. Yeah. <laughs> but you just have to assume it's not going to be like, you know, an RPG. Right. But right. Who the but, fuck knows? But it could be. I mean, that would be fun. That would have been neat. I would, I would love to RPG. play the itchy and scratchy RPG. <laughs> <laughs> If you were to compare your experiences with this game to a movie or a celebrity or a piece of media or really anything. I wrote this when I was in a bad place. Um, and it, I, again, I did enjoy the game, but eventually I just kind of got kind of tired of it. Mm -hmm. And it felt like they, they got me in the first couple of rounds and then it was just kind of after the next couple it was like eh you know and so i i i chose the movie the hangover part three. Oh man <laughs> I, I haven't seen that one but uh, i heard it's not good because if you because you want it to be good <laughs> uh -huh. and it's not that it's bad it just kind of falls flat mm -hmm. and it's more of the same mm -hmm. and it doesn't hit. It's not as funny. You, sure. you almost feel obligated to laugh, but you really know you don't find this funny at all, mm -hmm. you know? And I thought that's kind of where I got that it, that it just sort of after like level six or whatever it was where I finally stopped playing it's like, yeah, I'm just doing the same thing with different weapons, you know? Yep. Um, and I thought um, I did like the fact that it was based on a secondary set of characters, much like Krusty's Funhouse, mm -hmm. that we can, we can make something good from a second, a B-lister, so to speak, mm -hmm. you know? I found that to be the appealing part, yeah. but but yeah, hang hangover part three, um, for me. Um, I chose Johnny Depp and Amber Heard mm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> because because itchy you shits on, on Scratchy's bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you have to win the final round: is shit on Scratchy's bed. You're getting into my achievements. Oh. <laughs> 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 Sorry. No, no, no. Just kidding. That would have been a good one. It would. But yeah, I was just thinking about uh, who some celebrities have fought like publicly <laughs> recently. That's that's them. That's good shit. Uh, I was on the same band as you, and I chose Groundhog Day, and mm. that it was the same thing over and over and over with slight variations. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, good things. There's some good things we can say about this game. Uh, I had I liked the animation I and, and the graphics. Great. I thought they looked really good. Um, obviously, it was I think it moved pretty well. You know, the controls were pretty good. I liked that. Um, I thought I thought the concept was simple and easy to understand. After you, you know, if you if you had the manual, obviously you would know. But it, I, once you figure out the point of what you're supposed to do, uh -huh. it's a simple concept, and it doesn't, again, it doesn't vary much, but it does provide some entertaining gameplay. Yeah, and in our <laughs> defense, I mean, this is kind of unheard of, like a plat, because this is a platformer where a fighting game is like taking place. This yeah. is a fighting game, but it's like the stage is not just the stage. It, it is a platforming fighting game level. <laughs> it, it, it reminds yeah. me yeah. a lot yeah. of like um, Smash Bros, right? So you've got like this level that you can maneuver around mm -hmm. in however you want to do it. Mm -hmm. The level's not... The level is what it is. Mm -hmm. That's your stage to take on. And you just got to try to catch Scratchy and hit him. Right. But I mean, this is, and I agree, because I thought about Smash Brothers too, but this is like even like bigger 
than that. You know, because yeah, like yeah. the arenas it's a, and Smash, it's a big level. Yeah, it's it can like be a big. Jungle Book sized level. Whenever you can really just stay in the first frame, right, and until you win, yeah. right. I guess that is kind of like the downside to that is yeah. like the what I found out later, and if I would have thought about it, is. The easiest way to do it is, yeah, just stand around and wait for Scratchy. Get well, in an area because he, he can hurt himself. Yeah, I was just right. going to so say just, one of my good things was that Scratchy is vulnerable to the same things you are. Right. So if you manage to find that sweet spot where he will, he will run himself into an enemy mm-hmm. and get hurt before he ever even gets to you. So you could just potentially stand still and watch him kill himself and win. So I, I liked. I thought that was neat. Just, that is, neat. you know, I don't. I, some people be like, "It's a bug," or you know, I don't. I don't know. I think it's neat that you're not the only threat to him. Yeah, I know? think that's neat too. I, I definitely agree with you there. I do think that is. It feels like sloppy programming. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like it's. It kind of sucks to see because I also have a. a the concept of a fighting game happening in a platformer is like a really neat concept. It's kind of a shame to see that like it was executed without like a whole lot of yeah. finesse, yeah. you know, it, cause like the only driving force to really <clears throat> explore the level is to gain new weapons, um, and to gain extra lives. Um, and I also have like on this list that there are a lot of weapons or a variety of weapons that you can pick up and use on Scratchy. And they, I laughed. I laughed at a, at a couple of these because yeah. it's like I was, some of it's shock, but it's just like, oh, like when Itchy has like a flintlock pistol and fires it at Scratchy, like it blows his face off and it's just a skull you know and it's like they nailed it that's like that's like from the cartoon like i mean that's like and and it was shocking it was like a it was a pleasant surprise it was like oh holy shit they Mm -hmm. they did that that's they Mm -hmm. didn't have to do that but they were they capitalized on that they want to keep that true to form right yeah theme yeah and i thought that was cool and at the end of each level after you've beaten scratchy you then go to a bonus or a boss fight mm-hmm. where Scratchy mm-hmm. is usually piloting some form of vehicle. He's robotnik. He's robotnik. It. Yes. yes, yes. And you throw. Th- you, you, they give you plenty of weapons. Like and so they, they're the little the wind little up scr- wind up Scratchies. Yeah, they You're don't right. hurt you, yeah. which I thought they did hurt you, and I was avoiding them. Do they not? Oh, I didn't. Yeah, I'd, I always tell them to make sure they didn't hit me. Yeah, well, I didn't know they, they unless didn't I, I mean, I think I might have been playing on easy for a while, so maybe well, I that's, did play on easy the whole time. Maybe that is <laughs> different. I didn't really, honestly, when they would hit me, I would go into invincibility frames, so I just assumed that they were hurting me, but I didn't look at my life to I actually think confirm. Maybe at some point mine was glitching a little too because at some point almost well, inevitably easy. i would stop being able to use my secondary weapon like it wouldn't let me switch oh really to like you know when you 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 have a mallet by default mm-hmm. that you can always use and if you press like y it switches to whatever weapon you've been collecting from the little wind up scratchies and um, I at w- one point almost in every level it would stop letting me switch to that weapon. Hmm. I don't. I think it, I think it was glitchy. Well, I I was uh, along with the weapons and talking about um, you know the different varieties of them. I also you you mentioned the mallet. You do have that by default, and I was like, this mallet's awesome. I'm just gonna stick with the mallet. It's pretty good if you could time it right. And then. I used one of the other weapons, and I was way like, more "Oh, damage. okay, yeah, mm. way wow. more damage." Yeah, because like yeah, with big the, bone, okay. big bone, yeah. right? Big bone, <laughs> or, or big bone, cannon, chase me. cannonballs, or, or something. I had the axe, but with yeah. yeah, the axe would cut scratchy right, right in, in two. half. Uh, but with the mallet, you take away tiny little mm-hmm. bits of power from him. With an alternate weapon, you would it's you the could only reason get him in four hits. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So that and that like really worked for me because I a lot of times I have a tendency to go through games like Castlevania and I'll try not to use the sub weapons. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I can't tell you why. I just yeah, do it that is way. Cool as shit. Whip is cool as shit. Mega Man tend to go Mega, through it with Mega the Buster, with the Mega yeah. Buster yep. until I get to a boss. Like that's just kind of 
That's just kind of how I do typically. Yeah, me yeah, too. No, I, I feel you. And so this game really broke that because it's like well, well, that I think it's also the conservation of the resources. resources. Yeah, yeah. Which but I mean, you don't have to do in this. You, you do. The weapon will run out. Uh, it will, but when you get to the boss fight, though, you get plenty more. Well, I think there's a difference because, like, what what I was getting from the little scratchies were these like ranged weapons yeah. to be used the on the on the, the boss. Yeah. The bones and the axes and the guns and all that, I just found those randomly as power-ups in the level. Well, and yeah. they wear off, but you could They'll also change. use the cannonballs and stuff as weapons oh, in I didn't the main know that. game. And then, but then when you get to that boss, it, they just feed it to you. I know, right. And it's it's kind of a... <clears throat> I kind of get why they do that because it would suck to get to a boss stage and not have any of the the ammo that you're supposed to use. Yeah, it'd be it. impossible. You couldn't hit right. him with the mallet in those vehicles or whatever. But it also undercuts them wanting you to collect them in the stage prior. Right. You know what I mean? It's right. kind of like they didn't really. It feels like they didn't really think that through. And maybe honestly, what it felt like was like a a quality thing yeah. later on in development where people were like. I, there's no way I can beat this boss. Yeah, and they're like, ah, slap a, we'll just slap a bandaid on that. We'll, we'll just feed you a bunch of wind up scratches. Flex tape, yeah. right? Boom. <laughs> yeah. Because my so before I, I say some bad things and my big bad thing, the one question I kept asking myself while I'm playing it is, who is this for? Because you know, the Simpsons fan, the older Simpsons fan, good with the hyper violence, but it's not. <clears throat> super challenging it feels like a kid could play this yeah but it's definitely not made for a kid yeah. that's why so I, that's why i give it kind of the arcade thing for me because i feel like this one's a good quarter muncher you know i could see standing in front of an arcade cabinet and playing this one and yeah. i think it's it's meant for an arcade kind of experience as opposed to a long engaging situation yeah. and it would probably work better in an arcade environment too because um i mean i think you guys have mentioned this already but i mean it's like it kind of gets boring yeah like yep. there there came they give you a lot of opportunities in the game to like get like a one-up loop where yeah. it's like okay i know where the one-up is so i can go collect it in case i die i won't run out of one-ups and i think it's if it continues anyway is that right i because I, so. I i game over once and i, I was like okay because I wanted to game over. Like by the yeah. time I, I was done, it was just like, okay, this is like I've gotten what I'm gonna get. Right. Out of this. Yeah. Yeah. The only the only reason to continue playing is to see, oh, okay, what kind of stage is next? You know, yeah. is it a? Because yeah. is it? It starts with the prehistoric stage, and then it goes to like the pirate stage, and then the cowboy stage, and it's like. I gave up on the cowboy stage. That's where I got I got annoyed with it because Scratchy kept popping out with sheriff badges like out of nowhere. Which were deadly. And yeah, they're super deadly. And it's like he just kind of gets you sometimes. Like Yeah. Just the angle he's at yeah. and shit. It's just you're it's just gonna happen. Which, so that just kind of got to the point where it's like, yeah, I could grind this out, but I mean, I don't really yeah. uh, have I lost the desire to play it. I well, mean, and I think that they didn't. One of my one of my bad things. Are we on bad things? Yeah. One of my bad things was that there's no real cutscenes to speak of. It's yeah. like, and they give you no. And, and I feel like Itchy and Scratchy is like ripe for making good cutscenes that could be five to ten seconds long. Right. Let every boss end with that in some big yeah, spectacular because lot. Yeah. Dynamite launching death. Give me something sure because it, there is, it's, like you said, Dave, aside from seeing what the next level is going to be, there's really no incentive to keep playing. And I've always felt like cutscenes were that kind of standard incentive to see how yeah. what happens. It's a nice reward. Yeah, it is a nice reward, especially mm -hmm. if it has the potential to be something funny because i always liked the itchy and scratchy yeah, cartoons yeah. in the simpsons you know yeah. it was a nice little funny on funny kind of situation mm -hmm. you know and they leaving that out kind of disappointed me because mm -hmm. it's like yeah you, ha you have the room you could have made mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. to reward us and i don't know i yeah that, I that was kind of one of my bad one of my bads i think this game has I'm not exaggerating. 
<clears throat> some of the worst music in a Super Nintendo game that I have mm. ever played. It's not good. It's and like it opens the fucking. They don't use the itchy and scratchy song. They use something that sounds like it, but it ain't the itchy and scratchy mm, song. Right. And it's like, did you guys fucking That's license weird. the characters and not license the music? Probably. Because that is. 1,000% what it sounds like because it's a sound-alike itchy and scratchy theme. It's and it's like, like you might as well not have even yeah. put that in there. I, c- I could have scratchy. it not be yeah. there. <laughs> I could have it not be there and imagine fight, 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 bite, bite, bite when they're hitting each other in the in between levels. It's the same right. like the opening where they hit with the mallet and hit right. with the bat. Yeah, they do it. I imagine that anyway because it's just built in. Right, I know totally. that's what happens in my mind when I see them do it. But to have it be just slightly off pitch oh, God, and, and not quite the same tune, yeah, and it's like, awful. What a way to open the game. Like, cause that's how it opens, and it's just yeah. like, God damn it! Like, <laughs> start just start on the wrong foot. Yep. So what I what I felt was the what to me became the only challenge of the game, and I hate it when games do this. Is overcoming a mechanic becomes the challenge. <clears throat> so what I hate is my bad thing is where it lost me is you cannot jump and attack. Yeah. Oh, I know, dude. That, that was such. So, that was so that ruined, ruined it. Yeah, yeah. It, I hated it at that point. There because, would have been so many. Yeah. I would have gotten through the levels a lot yeah. faster. Th- that becomes the challenge: trying right, to yeah. find the angles for the bosses. And I for, know it. Right. I mean, yeah. At yeah, that point, totally. I was like, okay, the challenge is overcoming We're, their mechanic. Fuck. Agreed. Right. Agreed. And I and I also had a an issue similarly. Uh, you can't duck. There's like no way to defend yourself because it's like when yeah, you're when taking s- hit, scratchy or, or running totally. Like when Scratchy kept popping out out of the right side of the screen and throwing a star, it's like I can't dodge this. Right. I I, I cannot. It's I can't got duck it. Let me knock I can't it out of the air. It. I yeah. can't knock it out of the air. It's just like I gotta eat it. Yeah. And it's like when he keeps doing that over and over again, it's like. Fuck this! This is yep. sucks. Yeah. And I don't, it's a weird nitpicky Bad. thing that there's no like climbing animation or anything like that. You're yeah. just flat, flat, itchy, just jumping. I don't, I don't know. It just feels yeah. lazy. No, I agree. And I kind of at one point was like, maybe they're trying to do it because it's like a cartoon. But I don't, I don't think that's the real No, case. this was just mechanics. Yeah, this was it is, bad design. It is like two frames of animation. Like there's yeah. like a standing animation <laughs> yeah. and then like an attack animation. And yeah. So the second boss, whenever I'm trying to like angle the rocks the right way to hit it, I was like, yeah. fuck, fuck this. Yeah. I don't like the challenge being your lack of options. And sure. I think I'm one out. I think one thing that yeah. was sort of a whiff was not giving you the option to play as one or the other. You know, I could not play as Scratchy. Uh Not that, I mean, it could have been the exact same game. Just let me choose to play as Scratchy. Mm -hmm. Doesn't change the way the game plays or works or whatever. I just think it's, you've got the animations. Just let me do it. Mm -hmm. Because it's itchy and Scratchy. the other way be ultra hard mode. To where he just one shot you. Right. Something. But just not having that as an option just kind of it feels left, weird it feels weird mm-hmm. because it's not itchy and scratchy if it's just itchy versus scratchy you know what right. i'm saying yeah. i don't know how to i don't i don't know why that makes sense to me it, but this was itchy versus scratchy not itchy and scratchy right and it makes me feel like the other games were under budget so they had just a little bit to make something else with and this is what they made cuz it it feels like a lot of opportunity mm-hmm. and and options squandered for something super basic. Yeah. Compared to how much shit like all the shit that was put into fucking Bart's Nightmare. Yeah. It feels like there's just not I I agree with you in the way it looks and things like that but it feels like I don't know. It just feels bare bones. Oh, I agree with that. And I, it was just the only thing I was kind of having like a point of contention with was like, I don't know, man. I guess Bart's Nightmare did have a bunch of shit. I, in it, I would but, rather but like, play this than Bart's Nightmare. Agreed. I would too. And, or and virtual, virtual Bart, Bart, in my opinion, yeah. as well. Which is fucked it's up weird. to be like it's Itchy and Scratchy say. is the second best Super <laughs> a Simpsons game on the Super Nintendo, and I don't like the first best one. <laughs> <laughs> so. I would like to 
one of the things I did like about this game yeah. was that they gave each level its own very itchy and scratchy esque title. title like screen. you know, they're yeah. always using a play on words uh, to title the itchy and scratchy episodes, and they did not disappoint. Yes. Uh, I'm going to read some of these now, yeah, if you don't mind. Please, a site for sawed eyes is one that I recall. Jurassic Bath, <laughs> the prehistoric level, mm -hmm. uh, the medieval dead. Yes, the medieval dead. Come on, mm -hmm. that was awesome. Mm -hmm. That's a great title. Uh, Mutilation on the Bounty, <laughs> uh, the Poseidon Adventure. P U S S mm -hmm. Poseidon Adventure, which could also be a porno. It could. It might it be. A, por a porno. <laughs> you know, that porno. Who calls it porno? Why did I just say porno? What is this, 1995? <laughs> Jesus. Did you open Christ. that Bishojo game and like <laughs> go back in time? I did. Uh, the Magnificent Severed. Uh -huh. Oh, so good. A Sight for Sawed Eyes. There you go. Uh, disassembly Line. <laughs> and that, that was it. Uh,. So I almost got through this entire game. That feels weird. So the last, <laughs> I, I just read this from a walkthrough, and I want to read the last chapter uh, of Disassembly Line. The future is now. Look out for the clones, clocks, gears, and, of course, Scratchy. Stand by that circle thing and collect about 40 to 45 wrenches if you need to. Then it's Scratchy killing time. You go all the way to the right and stand next to that arm at the end. What you have to do is stand to the left, shoot a wrench, then quickly move back to the left because the conveyor belt pushed you to the right. Also remember to hold the weapon button for about a second to make the shot go further. Didn't know you could do Didn't that. Didn't do that either. Uh, that's how he kept hitting you with them little throwing stars. He was holding the button down. Uh, repeat this. Yeah. Repeat this shoot and run process, and eventually you'll get to him without a problem. Congratulations. Cr Scratchy's now a pile of putrid kitty mush. Oh, and by the way, you beat the game. <laughs> like, apparently it ends the way it began. You just win. Yeah, I you just win. That. Yeah, it's just over. Uh, I didn't watch a little playthrough. No codes, no secrets. You know, just, just a game. It's just a fucking game. I read the manual, and I, I read the manual after I played the game. Typical style yes. for me, I guess. And I read Roman don't need instructions. <laughs> right. We, we yeah. Know. We yeah, know yeah. that from the home improvement. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Damn it. I love that. God, I love that. This is like the Armand Asante. <laughs> <laughs> In the instruction show. manual, I'm like, so I'm reading it, I'm like, cheese boost. <laughs> yeah. Yes, What's I, that? Used, I used cheese what is, boost. I, I did it by collect accident cheese. So You what? collect cheese, and then it lets you, like, you press X or something, uh, and, you, and you run real fast. It's the only change in animation. Oh, okay. It's, it's so Scratchy's feet turn into, like, for circles, you know, like right. he's running super fast, but yeah. you can catch, or Itchy's feet, and you can you can catch him. Uh, so, like, well, you can go on the offensive right, when right. you have the cheese. You can chase his ass down, and that was 90% of the time. How I beat him. Yeah, because that would have been Because I'd chase useful. his ass down into a corner uh -huh. and I'd just whip up on him until yes. he was gone. Okay. All right. Yeah, I wish... You, yeah, you didn't have to wait for know. him to come to you yeah. or chase... You know, you couldn't catch him. I know. I would chase him after he throw that, would throw that star at me, yeah. but it's like, I can't yeah. catch but him unless that, he runs into you something. You get that yeah. cheese and he's, gotcha. he's your bitch after that. Maybe I'll have to go back, play it again. And then he runs into a spike, <laughs> gets his frames of invincibility, and runs away again. Yes. Um, one last bad thing is that I felt like, and maybe it's because I didn't know about the cheese boost, but to me, it ended up feeling like a slap fight, uh, mm. which I feel mm. like is very in on brand for itchy and scratchy, it's, yeah, but not like a super fun video game yeah. experience right. where it's like, okay, I got him. Oh, no, he got he me. Got me. Oh, oh, got who's him. gonna die first? Yeah, yep. it's like got to the point where like. If I could manage to avoid getting hit by him like three times, mm -hmm. I knew I'd have him because we'd be tra otherwise we'd be trading blows, right. you know. <clears throat> so I needed to be just a little ahead of him mm -hmm. in the damage dealt 
to me factor, to get out on top to come out on top yeah man and then like just to reiterate the bad music just one more time <laughs> that fucking prehistoric level where it's like they thought it would be a good idea to like do a shitty parody of the Flintstones like I mean it's like a, just a theme because I mean it's like <laughs> And it's like, what the fuck are we doing? And you're going to make me listen to this on a loop. Uh, uh, for a while. A long time. Yeah. Like, until I can figure out that I need to kill Scratchy. Yeah, that's, you know? the one. <laughs> that's the one where they, they that should have had the good music it on should. this one. Because y'all don't know what you're doing. Like, bring, bro. Guantanamo. Bring, bro, bring, I mean, bro. it was just like, bring, oh, my bro, bring, God. Bring, bro. Who bring, bro. thought it was a good idea? Like, it's not even a good parody. Thank you for turning on the backup recorder, Ian. <laughs> I didn't want to turn it on when I set it up because I didn't know where we were going to start. Boy, I sure hope I've got it right. You on got it side. right. I do. I see you waveforms. Got it right. so, uh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. Just the music. Horrible. Bad it's music. It's really, really, Check. really bad. Like, If there's any reason to play this game, play it so that you can believe what I'm saying about the music. <laughs> believe it. Believe it. Believe it. By rent or birthday. Rent. Yeah, it's a rent. I wouldn't want it. I wouldn't want to own this one because I don't know. I guess it's fine. If I got it for my birthday, I wouldn't have been mad. I'd have been disappointed in the content, but it's a fine experience. So I wouldn't hate it if I got it for my birthday, but I wouldn't like set out to purchase it. Mm -hmm. This would be a rental for sure if this was coming out of my pocket. I do want this game. Like out of all the Simpsons games, it's like, yeah, this is this is the one. This is the one that I want. Didn't think it was good, but it's like, it's. I would go back and play this again. Where it's yeah, like, this is this is replayable. Yeah, it's like I don't know. I got like fifteen minutes, and it's like, fuck it. <laughs> like yeah. I mean, <clears throat> well, let's uh, since we have done our Simpsons saga, mm. the four games. How would you rank one through four? Like, God, that gets tough for number me. Number one being the best, number four being the worst. Because I would rather play Itchy and Scratchy game than mm. Krusty Super Funhouse. But I think Krusty Super Funhouse is a better made video game. Mm -hmm. So if we're going on, like, best to worst, like things you just recommend somebody, I'd recommend Krusty Super Funhouse, the Itchy and Scratchy game, Virtual Bart, Bart's Nightmare. I, I agree Same. with that, and the only the only reason Virtual Bart is ahead of Bart's Nightmare for me tomato throwing the game. tomato throwing <laughs> for game. me yeah, that's that's for me is. too <laughs> the lack of the hub world is what uh, yeah. yeah that's I a hate yes. navigating that fucking hub world yeah. just to fucking play the game yeah man yeah. I just the <clears> stuff <throat> in Bart's Nightmare like just going back and thinking about like Bartzilla like I mean. Uh, it's just that game random was ass shit broken. where it's just like it was just broken I, what, what do you do conceptually you know? <laughs> it was broken from the start yeah it's the worst of the four um, I, I rank in the exact same order as you Dave Yep, for those exact Con reasons consensus alright yes All right. we want to see what Flopsy has to say uh, yeah do you guys uh, want to take a guess as to what Flopsy thought about the itchy and scratchy game, a game that I didn't even know existed mm. until uh, we were going to do this little Simpsons block. I think that Flopsy is going to give this game two and a half stars. This is out of five. It's out of five. They're going to give it. I'm going to say they're going to give it three stars, and that this is very uncommon. That's exactly my guess as well. I said very uncommon two and a half. Okay. Yep. Well, let's see. According to the Flopsy, a.k.a. the Ultimate Nintendo Guide to the SNS Library, 1991 through 1998, by Pat Contry, courtesy of Monster Mole Mike, and a mysterious shadowy benefactor, mm. they gave the itchy and scratchy game two and a half stars. You nailed it, Tyler. And this is an uncommon game okay i would have bet a bunch on very uncommon me too yeah. I, yeah, I, I never heard never of it didn't know it existed realized never it was seen a it. thing yeah yeah okay what could we buy it for how much do you think if you were to buy this game loose 
How much would you pay for it? I'm going to go high on this one. And I think not... I, well, because at first I, I pre-gamed, uh, at least thought about it ahead of time. And I said I thought it was very uncommon. I still think it would be kind of a, one of the more desirable ones, especially considering, like, proof case in point, Dave just said, I want this one, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. But I think you're not going to get it for less than 40 Two dollars, forty-two bucks, forty-two dollars for me. Okay, thirty, thirty bucks. Yep. <clears throat> Tyler, we have a numeric palindrome here. The actual retail value of the itchy and scratchy game for the Super Nintendo loose, on average, according to PriceCharting.com at the time of this recording, is forty-three dollars thirty-four cents. Damn, that's almost within a dollar, Ian. Almost. That's well high. Done. That is high. Yeah, I'm, as I do want this game. I'm not. No, nah, it's not, not forty three dollars. Nah, I can spend forty three bucks on it. It's a lot. Twenty, eighteen, twenty. Sure, I do that. And I mean, I've spent a more than that. Palindromic number. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's called a palin- palindromic number. <laughs> when I looked it up, it said numeric palindrome. <laughs> hey guys, guys, yeah. y'all, y'all are saying the same thing. Because <laughs> I, I just wondered, I was like, is there an actual name for that? <laughs> yeah, numeric palindrome. <laughs> I looked it up when I made my notes. <laughs> you got my palindromic number in my numeric palindrome. <laughs> I think if that proves there's not a term for it, nothing will. <laughs> There's two terms for it, apparently. There's probably more. Just the same <laughs> words in a different order, like a, a palindrome. Fr- fronter, <laughs> we call it a front or backers number. Uh, I think that this would be a really cool multiplayer game if you could like each have a screen and one's itchy, one's scratchy, and you're running around the levels. Agreed. That would be really like cool. Like Who's Your Daddy, only it's itchy, itchy and scratchy. scratchy. Actually... <laughs> Forget everything I just said. <laughs> and someone mod who's your daddy to be an itchy and scratchy game. We have uh, any achievements? Uh, I've got a couple. Ian, you got some? I have a few. Go for it, man. My first achievement is fight, fight, fight. In the first, and to get fight, 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 you, you defeat Scratchy on any level with only the mallet. Nice. Uh, my second achievement is bite, bite, bite. And to get bite, bite, bite. You be defeated by Scratchy on every level at least once. And then my last achievement is the Itchy and Scratchy and Poochie <laughs> show. <laughs> and to get that, you constantly think about how there should be a Poochie cameo <laughs> somewhere in the game and also have an existential realization. Gosh, be a screen clear. <laughs> Yeah, Poochie <laughs> should be a screen player. He really should. <laughs> Everything and on the goes screen just goes world. up like on animation <laughs> cell being pulled. <laughs> My planet needs me. <laughs> and I'm going to start over. Please. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the itchy and scratchy and Poochie show. And to get this, you constantly think about how there should be a Poochie cameo somewhere in the game. And also have an existential realization that I very well am might be the Poochie of Tadpog. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I was like, am I, am I Poochie? <laughs> you are the dog on the shirt. I am. I know. <laughs> That was dirty, Chocto. <laughs> Wizened Poochie. <laughs> I think we've solved the I problem. Wizened, Wizened Poochie says, check it out. Says, check it out. So you got to cosplay Poochie next. Please. Oh, God. <laughs> Radical. Are you Poochie or Dan Cortez? <laughs> rather be Poochie. Oh. oh, damn. Those are good achievements. Thank you. I've got a couple myself. The first achievement is lemonade. Please. I made it just for you. <laughs> you are my best friend. <laughs> they love <laughs> and share. And love and love and share. Love and share. Love and share. 
name of that one was, the name of that one was Porch Pals. Porch Pals. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh fuck. <laughs> In order to unlock lemonade, please. I made it just for you. You are my best friend. <laughs> uh, you finish a level with Itchy's yellow squiggly life meter completely full. God damn it. That's so good. I love it. Uh, next achievement is, I have to go now. My planet needs me. Hey. <laughs> In order to unlock, I have to go now. My planet needs me. Die unexpectedly when you realize that you're playing a game based on a cartoon within another cartoon. Mind blown. <laughs> Next achievement is um, here's Eastern Europe's favorite cat and mouse team, <laughs> Worker and Parasite. Worker and Parasite. <laughs> <laughs> In order to unlock, here's Eastern Europe's favorite cat and mouse team, Worker and Parasite. You listen to the game intro, which instead of using the actual itchy and scratchy theme, plays a wholly unsatisfying <laughs> sound alike. <laughs> Last achievement. This one's going to be controversial. You might not like this one. Lord knows I don't. But according to the cuttingroomfloor.com, there between the levels used to be interstitials. This is in the code. It just wasn't used. Interstitials between Bart and Lisa who are watching oh, the episode okay. and they're talking about the episode that's coming up. See, and that mm. that would track in there. Execution, though. Let me serve our feelings. <laughs> so my last achievement is um, you're probably too young to remember the short-lived Itchy and Scratchy and Friends Hour. They had to come up with some friends. There's Disgruntled Goat, Uncle Ant, Klu Klux Klam. In order to unlock that one, this will all make sense. <laughs> Find the unused text of Bart and Lisa having conversations about the levels. Specifically, this one. Remember Klu Klux Klam, okay? It's important. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> Lisa says, Lisa says, <laughs> Lisa Simpson uh -huh. says, woo, woo, woo. This is the one when Itchy is a red Indian. Oh, wow. Womp, womp. Lisa. Yeah. That's really not, uh, I mean, it's really on brand for Lisa. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. I get it's 1995, Still. but man, that was a. <sighs> she had had seven years at that point. Mm -hmm. they, she'd yeah, been they well knew, established. <laughs> yeah, they do better than that. As, uh, you need to know better. That's the same Lisa who believes JFK is coming back to run with Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one, and it is, if Gandhi was a mouse who also didn't sleep with underage girls in his bed to <laughs> test, <laughs> test his uh, iron will. And you unlock that by not touching Scratchy at all, letting him die on all the things around you. Mm. The pacifist Passive route. Pacifism run. Pacifism. So you decide to start launching nukes. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Civilization two style. <laughs> you know, I've spent money on a lot of things that I wish I hadn't, but I've labored far too long over a decision to buy a worker in Parasite t-shirt. <laughs> like, I, every so often, I think, I'm going to buy a worker in Parasite t-shirt, and I don't. And I don't <laughs> know why, because that is um, that is one of the fucking funniest things that I remember from that. I agree, Poochie. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> we need a WWPD bracelet. For you, you. Can even look at, <laughs> you can even look at me when I said that. You just kept looking straight ahead. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Thank you, dude. <laughs> All right. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, it is. Anything else? Just talk about uh, the game we're going to do next. I propose mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. we do a game based on one of my favorite Sting songs, <laughs> Demolition Man. It's the 30-year anniversary of Demolition Man this month, so I feel like it needs to jump the line. And then, Tyler, you had a great idea that... Keep I, this series going. Let's yeah. do a Sly Stallone series. From Simpsons to Stallone. So that means... As God intended. <laughs> Stallone-tober. <laughs> so coming up after Demolition Man, we're going to have Cliffhanger, 
And Judge and Dredd. Judge Dredd. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a weird November. <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen all these movies several times, so I'm very prepared to have movie talk. Is I gotta watch the one with the seashells that everybody references. Demolition Man, Demolition Demolition Man. Three, Man. yeah, three seashells. Okay. You gotta watch Demolition Man this weekend. I will. You'll, I will watch all of these. It's movies. a. It's actually a really good movie. Yeah, I agree. Like, yeah. However, I am it's curious to see little. what it. I haven't seen it since I was like in middle school, and I saw it a bunch when I was in middle school and loved it, and still have really good feelings about it. I have a feeling that that nostalgia is absolutely going to carry me through but i am legitimately curious about like what somebody somebody in their late 30s watching demolition man for the very first time yep. like what that's what that is I'll, like. I'll i'll say it is a bit dated but honest to god not in a bad way i've rewatched it recently um and i i still love it mm. and it's not just nostalgia i legitimately like this movie i'm a huge Stallone fan i'm pretty much on board for whatever he's doing with a couple of exceptions here and there, but I like the guy and I like the choices he's made movie wise for the most part. So yeah, um, I can't wait to hear your take on yeah, it. I'm with I'm too. with Dave. I I can't wait to hear from someone who's never seen mm -hmm. it uh, how that tracks in 2023. I've never seen Cliffhanger before. <coughs> Have you? <laughs> and I've never, I've never seen, seen Judge any Dredd. of these movies. I saw uh, the remake, of, or not the remake, but the new Judge Dredd. With Car Love Carl that. Urban. With Carl Urban. I thought yeah. that was fantastic. Can't go wrong with Carl Urban. It was um, the Judge Dredd, Carl Urban one was better than the, but it was for different reasons. Yeah. You know. I loved it, man. To me, it felt like a sci fi diehard almost because so, it all happens in that building, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it's, so it's like that's really cool. I like action movies where it's like this shit just happens in one location, and mm. it's that's very yeah. much what that movie was like. Um, what was I thinking of? I was trying to think. Oh, it's um, Rob Schneider is in Judge Dredd, yes, the original one with Stallone. Oh, he has a carrot, right, 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 right. yeah. I so, for a minute there, I thought we were talking about Demolition Man again. He's also right. in Demolition Man. Yeah, he has. He's not so much a part. He's only in it for in Demolition Man for a minute, right? But uh, it's also one of my favorite Sandra Bullock roles. Uh, she's super good in that mm -hmm. role as Agent ne Lenina Huxley, uh, and she's a big fan of. 90s action 90s movies, action movies <laughs> yeah. and she's always getting quotes and stuff right. wrong. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, I, no I, one again, take my achievement. Let's blow these guys. <laughs> <laughs> you really, you really licked his ass. <laughs> yeah, good shit. I can't wait. That's gonna yeah, be fun. I'm excited. Um, I think that's pretty good, guys. Yeah, I'm pretty good. Oh, yeah. Beard Tyler, glasses. <laughs> if you were to give this game a beard, it sums mm -hmm. up how you feel about it. What kind of beard would you give it? Woolly Willie's beard. Oh, the little magnet. Because you're just doing the same magnetized mm. eyebrows and hair mm. over and over and over <laughs> again. This one has a cowboy hat. <laughs> 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 if you were to give this game a pair of glasses, mm -hmm. what kind of glasses would you give it? Those fucking glasses from Operation. Those Dude. fucking glasses. So all you're doing is just trying to reach down there and hurt yourself. Get the buzzer, try to get those glasses out, only to put them right back in and try again. I'm going to do better the next time. <coughs> go. I'm pretty sure I've given a woolly willy before. but Yeah, I think so, but it's been a long time. It's been a minute. Mm -hmm. Still applicable. Mm, oh, totally. Or, or since it's since the music is a slight, slight knockoff, this is a Wooly Williams beard. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a bully willy. <laughs> 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 Yeah. All right. All right. Man, well, that sums uh, it up. Yeah. I got a. I got a little business to attend. Get to. some business. business. Um, Get busy, Esty. We'd like to just talk for a minute. So sit right there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We can tell you a little bit about our Patreon at patreon.com slash tadpog or pisstasters.com. Taste the piss. If you'd like to donate money to the show. Um, we have a lot of donors, and uh, we're gr grateful for every bit of it because it really does help us out a lot mm -hmm. and uh, helps us produce the show and come up with cool things that we like to try to do from time to time. Um, so 
We do have, though, a list of executive producers, and these are our listeners who uh, donate $20 or more per month to the show. Uh, and I'd like to read the list of those people right now to make sure we give credit where credit is due. Uh, starting with it, Usurper Grimm, Cousin David Galino, Plinko Nick Price, Cubicle Monkey, Cthusius Jeff Miners, Master Cycle Baron Kevin Link, Joseph Phillips, Game Bug Prime Nathan Eaton, Matt Gentile, a.k.a. Gentle G. Thank you for increasing your donation uh, by a little bit this week. So hell, that, yeah. This one, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, Louisville Correspondent Princess Consuela Banana Hammock Flavor Trick Taryn Dahl, congratulations on your marriage. Pinball Airplane Archmage Chris Edler, we're sorry you couldn't be on this episode. Platinum Member Brett Miller, Sandwich Pope Phil Hawkins, Nate from Utah, first time caller, Drinksmith, Joey Webster, Derek Pope, Sandwich, and Cody Phillips. Thank you guys so much yes. for the generosity. Every time Dave sends us money every month, and I look at that total and I think, man, that is crazy that we've got people that just want to give us the money mm -hmm. uh, just for being us. Mm -hmm. And that, that means a lot. So thank you again totally. for everything. Uh, and as always, thanks to Dane. Mr. Puzzles, uh, our backlog manager, the multi-titled YouTube maniac that puts our show out on the YouTube every single week uh, just because he feels like doing it. Uh, and that, my friends, is that. Uh, our theme song is Moves, but I think we're driving with that check. And then show said about tadbog.com. How do you guys want to close this out? The Sports Pals. <laughs> yes. All right. So until next time, <gasps> Tropical, Tropical Capricorn. <laughs> I love you guys. Didn't get that voice right. Must be because I'm not smoking anymore. <laughs>Tadpog is hosted and produced by Tyler Holland, Dave Moore, and Ian Chandler and is available wherever fine podcasts are hosted. Have a question or comment for the hosts? Call us at 270-883-2555 and leave us a voicemail. We'll even play it on the show and respond eventually. Want to send us something? You can do that at Tadpog Studios, care of Nicole Nance, P.O. Box 3785, Paducah, Kentucky 42002. Sick of us doing all the talking? You can join in on the conversation by visiting our Discord at bit.ly slash tadpogdiscord or tastethepiss.com. Not many things are truly free these days, but our Discord is, and we'd love to see you there. Our theme song is Moves by Sycamore Drive, and a link to that track can be found at the show notes at tadpog.com. Thanks for listening. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our show on your favorite podcasting platform. We really appreciate it. Now I must leave. My planet needs me. Believe it! <laughs>